Martin Luther, when he wrote his catechism and the explanation to the third article, he said this, I believe I cannot, in, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me. The Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the one true faith. Martin Luther is saying, I can't do it. Even if I know what to do, I, I don't have the power to do it. I don't have the dynamite to do it. I don't have the rocket fuel to do it. That's what he was saying. Have you ever felt in your life that you lacked the power to do what you know is the right thing or to believe what you want to believe or to have the strength to just keep going in the face of whatever problems you might have or the wisdom to know how to handle something like a relationship or a job responsibility, a particular issue, finances. What in the world are we going to do? Well, of course, this COVID pandemic has been a challenge for everybody, has presented a new set of challenges on top of all the other challenges we've already faced. If there was ever a time for needing some Pentecost power, now's the time. So I invite you to follow along with the, either the worship folder or the, uh, on the screen as we walk through uh, quickly here uh, the message points for today based upon our psalm reading, Psalm 25. And then talking about how this comes down to cases. Where does all this talk about space flight and, in, and, and engineering and, uh, and uh, guidance systems and rocket fuel? How does this come down to cases here on Pentecost Sunday? During the days of the Apollo moon missions, NASA ground controller Ed Pavelka drew a cartoon character he called Captain Refsmat. The character's name was based on the mind-bending phrase, quote, Reference to stable member matrix NASA ground controllers used to describe the star-based inertial navigation system that safely guided the Apollo spacecraft to the moon and back again. God's word gives us another reference, a different kind of reference here, a spiritual north star, if you will, to safely guide our heavenward journey fueled by Pentecost power. We need to know what to believe, know what to do, but then we also have to have the power to do it, to believe it, to take that heavenward journey that we've been called to take. How do we do this? Well, first of all, number one here, Pentecost power fuels faith fuels faith. And you'll notice that there's a cause and effect relationship to everything I'm talking about here today. It begins with God because I do not have the strength to do this on my own. And then it has a consequence, an effect in our lives. Once He gives us His Holy Spirit power, we are enabled to actually believe, to trust, to have hope. Psalm 25 says this, In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. It's interesting the word shame is used here a couple of different times, isn't it? If we trust in the Lord, we're not going to be ashamed about that. There's some things in my life I'm ashamed about. Anybody, and let's see a show of hands here. How many people have been ashamed about something in their lives? We have one, two, three. No, we have some honest people here, right? Okay. Of course. Have you ever looked bad at, back at a particular time in your life or a particular incident and you just cringe? You shudder? You want to just hang your head and cover your eyes and shake your head and go, did I really say that? Did I really do that? I cannot believe that I could be so stupid or ignorant or wrongheaded or so gullible or whatever or behave so poorly, do something so wrong. I am so ashamed of myself, right? Now let me ask you this question. How many of you 
have ever been ashamed for your Christian faith. That you had your Christian faith. Been ashamed that you relied on the Lord instead of going the way of the world. How many of you have ever been put to shame by the fact that you trusted in Jesus through the worst of times? Or are those the times that stand out in your mind as, I'm so glad that I relied on the Lord at that time in my life. I would have never made it if I hadn't had the Lord. He did not put me to shame. I've done some shameful shameful things, but he's never put me to shame. I've never looked back on my life at those times when I've actually believed or behaved like a Christian and hung my head in shame and said, well, that was a bad thing for me to do. No, those are times maybe even of some pride in the best sense of the word that I, I, I stood strong during those times. Now, the world will try to put us to shame, right, about our Christian faith. People will say, well, you know, you religious people, you just got a crutch that you lean on. Yeah, our response to that is, yeah, what, what's your crutch, world? You know, if you're going to have a crutch, make it the right one. Because indeed, we're all crippled by sin, by an imperfect life. Well, Pentecost power fuels our faith. It gives us the, the power to believe and to trust and to hope. And we will not be put to shame for that. Now, number two, Pentecost power fuels faithfulness. Fuels faithfulness. Again, a cause and effect relationship. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to believe the promises in the word of God, but helps us also to respond to that belief, that faith, in the way that we speak, in our attitudes, in our, in our beliefs, as well as our behavior, we are able to be faithful to the calling of God in Christ to actually trust and obey, as the hymn says. The psalmist says this, Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. All day long. Not just Sunday mornings, not just uh, particular times, but all day long, every day, we can be faithful because we have Holy Spirit power. We have Pentecost power. Now, again, it's cause and effect relationship. Show me your ways. Uh, Show me, teach me, guide me. But we have to be willing to follow, to learn to obey, to trust, don't we? Are you willing to follow, to learn, to obey, to trust? My pastor, when I was growing up and going through confirmation class, Christian instruction class, he used to say it this way. When we talked about Luther's explanation of the third article of the creed, I believe I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. He'd say this. We don't have the power. We don't have the power we don't have the, the, uh, the fuel, spiritually speaking, to say yes to God. We really don't. Spiritually, we're in rebellion against God. But because of the Holy Spirit working through the Word of God, through the good news of the Gospel, we do have that spiritual fuel. We do have that power um, to say yes then. What we do have inherently in our own nature is the ability to say no to God. We can't say yes apart from the Holy Spirit, but we certainly can say no to God. And the reason is, is because God did not create puppets. God created us in the image of himself with the ability to say no. We can do that. So do you say yes by the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? in your decisions you make about whether to believe, trust, obey? Or do you say no to him because you want to do it your way? You think you've got a better idea. You don't want to listen to the word of God. You want to pick and choose what you're going to believe according to what your preferences are. Do you say yes or no to God? Number three, Pentecost power fuels forgiveness. Fuels forgiveness. The psalmist says this, 
Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me. For you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Those things that we're ashamed of, those things that we remember, those things that are burned into our brain that we are ashamed of from our youth or from other times, God's already forgotten about in Jesus Christ. Because Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for you, God has forgiven our sins. Jesus took our punishment for our sin and shame on himself. And so we're forgiven. That's fuel. That's power in life to know that we no longer need to be ashamed of what we've done because the blood of Jesus covers it all. And we have a new start and a new day on our destination journey. Well, the psalmist says, all the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. Now here we think of, oh my goodness, demands of a covenant. There's stuff I got to do now. I got to shape up and fly right, right? The disciples once asked Jesus, what must we do? They asked this question, John chapter 6. What must we do to do the works of God? We want to know what we're supposed to do to get to heaven, to live a good life, to do all these things. Well, of course we're to behave in certain ways. Of course we're to say certain things. Of course we're to hold... Uh, certain attitudes. But Jesus has an interesting answer to the question about what must we do to do the works of God. He said, the work of God is this, to believe in the one that he has sent. In other words, the demands of God are that you believe in Jesus. Believe in the gift. Not the task, not the work in and of itself, but believe in the gift that your sins are forgiven, that you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, that you have everything you need for your heavenward journey. You've got the rocket fuel. Trust that, believe it, have hope in that truth, because that's what we have. Number four, Pentecost power fuels fear of the Lord, fear of the Lord. Psalmist says this, who then are those who fear the Lord? That's the rhetorical question. Who are those who fear the Lord? Well, the people who fear the Lord are the believers. That's you and me. But wait a minute. I don't want to be afraid. In the Bible, Jesus tells his disciples, fear not. The angels, when they appear to people, say, don't be afraid. Fear not. And now we're told to be afraid. Well, here's the point, and I've said this before. When you fear the Lord, you fear nothing else and no one else. If you don't fear the Lord, you fear everything else. The fear of the Lord leads to peace and hope and joy. The fear of the Lord is not a bad thing. Your fear is placed in the right person, the right promise. And what does that mean, fear? It's this deep respect. It's a fundamental trust. It's a humble heart that fears the Lord. Nowadays, it's hard to find this attitude. People want to do their own thing. They want to be their own God. They want to decide what's right and true for themselves. And they don't want to listen to God because they don't want to be a servant or slave to anybody or anything. They are their own person. But what you've got is you've got people that don't have a Captain Refs mat, who don't have a point of reference with the North Star that God gives us in Christ and in his his word, who don't have a fear of the Lord, no humility, and they're lost in space and time. That's what they have. What about you today? The psalmist says this, my eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Only he gives us that navigation system for our heavenward journey. Only he gives us that fuel for our flight through life, the power of Pentecost for living. Let's pray. Father in heaven, 
We come in your presence this day and we confess, Lord, each one of us in the privacy of our own heart, but before your throne, Lord, we each one of us confess those things of which we are ashamed, those times of rebellion, even including now where we've refused to believe you, trust you, follow you, obey you. Lord, you provide everything we need. You give us our navigation system in life. You give us the power to get there. Forgive us for those times when we do not use what you have freely given to us because of your great love for us. Forgive us for not trusting you. Forgive forgive us for not obeying you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.